Welcome, everyone. We're so happy that you're joining us. Our guest, Winlin Tan, is an inner growth coach and women's well being, Qigong, and yoga specialist who is passionate about helping women find flow and ease in their lives through coaching and the ancient wisdom practices of Qigong, Tai Chi, traditional Chinese medicine, and yoga. Wenlin brings with her over 15 years of experience working across the fields of health, psychology, and wellness. And she's joining us today from Italy. Welcome, Wenlin. Thank you for joining us. Thanks for having me here, Sharon. It's my pleasure to be here. Wonderful. So many people in our audience are very familiar with the five elements of Chinese medicine, but perhaps they're not that aware of the relationship of those five elements to a woman's life cycle and menstrual cycle. Can you give us a brief lesson on the creative cycle of the five elements and their relationship to women's reproductive lives? Sure, Sharon. That's a great question. And um, before we begin, um, the five elements, probably those of us who are tuning in, they relate to each other in various different ways. And perhaps you have heard of the generation cycle of the birthing cycle that is actually also known as the creation cycle, meaning one of the elements actually gives birth to or generates another element. So take an example. The coming year is actually the water yin rabbit year and water element is the source of the mother of wood, which then uh, births fire and fire when uh, it, it remains, whatever is remaining from the fire that has burned to ashes is earth. And from earth, when we extract, when we refine uh, through the process of alchemy and refinement, we find metal and through metal. Um, on the surface of metal that has this cold texture and is contracting, is this contracting energy, condenses what is water, which then flows down. So it's this complete and never-ending cycle of one element or one force generating the other and flowing into the other. Now, to answer your question, Sharon, about how these energies and how these elements relate to a menstrual cycle of a woman or even the life cycle of a woman is that within the menstrual cycle, there are also similar repeating patterns of cyclical flows of energy. So if you're tuning in and if you've ever experienced the menstrual cycle, what you do have is a very intimate connection that is from inside with the fluctuating energies of the world outside. Let's take the menstrual cycle starting with the days of your period. So um, typically a period will last anything from one up to seven days, sometimes even longer, depending on your own cycle, which might be different from the average. This is the period of the water element when we're in the process of hibernation, of preservation, uh, in sanctuary, in this place of finding respite and also excavating the treasure that is deep inside. So we turn within. Uh, after this period of menstruation, what flows or follows is this rising energy. Estrogen levels begin to rise. And with this estrogen rising, what happens is very often in this follicular phase, uh, women report feeling this feeling of joyfulness, uh, this return of energy, and they're more explorative, they're more playful, um, they're more curious. This coincides with the phase of the wood element which is associated with this rebirth as stated in the traditional Chinese medicine classic, the Yellow Empress in a Canon. So this is a process and the phase of rebirthing yourself every time you come out of the menstrual cycle. After this phase, as the energy comes to a peak, what happens is that in ovulation, when an ovary is released, um, that women often report this is when they feel the most vibrant when you might be um, able to take on lots of things at work, at home, um, socializing with friends. Um, this is associated with the fire element and this expansive energy. It's really about stepping into your inner power and also speaking up, showing yourself authentically in the world. After this phase, uh, what follows 
after ovulation is the phase of the luteal phase. And the luteal phase is really quite long. So there have been some discussion about whether or not actually the luteal phase should be broken up into two distinct phases, meaning the first half, which is right after ovulation, when the energy is still quite high and when the, uh, the rising of the progesterone hasn't quite overtaken the dropping of the estrogen, that's the period where you might feel what is called the earth element. And this sense of centering, the sense of knowing who you are in the world, um, the earth element, as in the traditional Chinese medicine classic, the power is also about transmutation, transformation, this ability to find your center in any difficult situation. Following this, from the earth, we then reach the state the later stage of the luteal phase and also the metal element. So this is a contracting energy where we draw into ourselves. And I didn't yet talk about the full women's life cycle yet, but this is the phase where very often you hear um, it has a very bad reputation, PMS or the premenstrual syndrome, as well as in our life cycle as a woman, perimenopause. That's the phase where all the not so nice feelings start to rise up but these not so nice feelings, they are a great way of supporting us to set our boundaries, to connect within so that we can understand what we can say no to from outside so that then we can say yes to ourselves. So the metal element is all about refining, discernment, staying true to yourself and re-establishing your identity from inside out. After the metal element, what follows is the water element and that is associated with this, um, the same energy from the fall. It completes the cycle of menstruation. So that's the full loop. And um, going back to the women's life cycle, these also map onto the respective stages from girlhood, uh, womanhood, this perimenopause, and then there's the later stages when you're a wise woman and you have this lived experience. Thank you. That was a beautiful description. And I appreciated your uh, your mastery of the hormonal aspects of this process. So, you know, um, I think a lot of women are curious to know how they can manage their energy better during perimenopause or postmenopause because it is a tangible difference in the same way that when we go through puberty, we're like, wow, our hormones are doing different things. We have to learn how to manage them. Something similar happens when we start going through perimenopause and then, of course, after menopause. But that transition between uh, bleeding every month, slowing down the menstrual cycle, and then stopping it, how can women work with that time period and particularly related to the five elements in the creation cycle. You did mention a few things, but I wonder if you could go a little deeper into that. Thanks for sharing that, Sharon. And I love that you use the word manage to think about how we manage the situation. Um, the perspective that society has with regards to perimenopause or even PMS, it, for those of us who are still menstruating, is often seeing it as a problematic period. And as you mentioned, because during this period, there are lots of um, changes and shifts within our physiology and also our hormonal um, internal structures. What happens is I find that the women I work with and I support, the most important thing that we start to do as we approach these shifting transitions is a shift in mindset. Many of us start with the idea of our bodies or our minds or a situation with someone else as being something we want to have control over. How can we manage this situation? How can we resolve this problem? If we first approach the women's life cycle and also the menstrual cycle, seeing it as as natural as the fluctuating and the changing of the seasons or even the changing and shifting energies of the moon cycle, then we will know that there is a place and time for every single thing and all the difficulties, the challenges, whether they are physical, emotional, spiritual that you're experiencing right now, whether you're undergoing perimenopause or even if you're postmenopausal, or for those of you who are menstruating, if you're undergoing the shifts and changes during your menstrual cycle, first know that 
It is natural. You are as natural and legitimate as a tree or a cloud or the moon. And this is actually your connection to the greater source. This is your inner power, not your inner weakness. And once you acknowledge that this is a power, not a weakness, the next level would be to understand how you can have agency with rather than control over. And I find this, this big shift is a real radical change. It seems like a small thing, a small step to take, but it took me and a lot of the women I support a long time to acknowledge this and to understand that, okay, there are you know difficult things coming up. What is underneath these things? For example, if I've been irritable with a partner, if I'm experienced, seeing certain symptoms, for example, as I undergo perimenopause, could it be a reflection of, for example, a lack of a really good self-care practice that is supporting me as I go through this transition? The same thing for those of us who are undergoing PMS as well. So I think um, being able to see this as um, a supporting force and something that we can rise to meet with and that can actually help us is actually really, really powerful. I also wanted to just quickly add on that in traditional Chinese medicine, um, perimenopause is known as the second spring, the Chun. It's not actually a problematic period as described in various different other Western cultures. This is because um, all the energy that was sent, all the blood, the yin that was sent to the womb area that was used earlier on in our lives as women to procreate, to support life, is now brought back into us so that we have this blood flow ourselves. What a beautiful perspective. And if we start with that, then the next question would be, how am I going to choose to be reborn in this second spring. I think this shift of perspective is very, very powerful. And since, of course, this is a Qigong summit, Qigong is one of the best ways to cultivate this sense of flow. It's a great mind-body exercise that also connects you with the deeper spiritualities. And I think it's a sustainable practice that can help you. It can guide you through any part of your life, all the way from girlhood into postmenopause. Beautifully said. And I can just attest to the second spring because for me, after menopause, I became so much more productive. All that energy that, as you said, goes to nurture your. Uh, childbearing capacities, then that energy is freed up and it rises and you have more creativity and you have more inspiration. And uh, yeah, I mean, I can just say that, you know, I'm 72 now. I've been practicing Qigong pretty much my whole life. And that second spring really happened for me. And, you know, when you're in it, sometimes you think, oh, this is so difficult, but actually it's a kind of a, a portal into the next stage of life. So thank you for that. Um, I'm wondering if you can address this uh, idea of the creation cycle in terms of men and their lives and also their reproductive lives, because we know now that there is something called andropause, you know, and uh, what is that all about? How do you relate that to this very important aspect of uh, Qigong and Chinese medical theory, the creation cycle? That's a great question, Sharon. And I think even though men, for example, they don't quite enjoy the benefits, we can say <laughs> benefits of the menstrual cycle, uh, men also, they are influenced by hormones as well, in including the circadian rhythms that affect our sleep and waking cycles, our fluctuating energy throughout the entire day. As you clearly pointed out, they also go through some kind of their variation of menopause. And I think the, the main thing, since I don't really work that much with men, and I can't say I'm an expert with men, um, I think for both men and women, the, the mark of this portal, as you mentioned, you so beautifully described, it's, it's a very important phase that we should treat with care. And this slowing down, I feel, that is um, vital during this period, I think it coincides 
with the need to give rise to um, lots of care put into a, a self-care practice and a sustainable movement and longevity practice. So within the lineage of Qigong, which is rooted in Taoist philosophy, there's this idea of yangshen, which means to cultivate life. I think as we grow older and older, the more important it is to really align with what is sustainable, that what we can continue doing, even when we're postmenopausal, even at the end of our lives, what can we continue to enjoy? And how might we continue to enjoy? And I think for men, this is what I see as being very powerful for them, for those of them that uh, I've seen, um, the partners of the, the, the women that I support, those of them who have been affected, they also see the change in their own partners and they do see that, ah, this is a time that I begin to slow down. I begin to find what is flow with me. How can I flow with life rather than focusing on the outward achievements in the world, uh, focusing on, for example, climbing the corporate ladder, instead investing in some parts of themselves through whether it is movement, self-care, meditation, um, how they eat, how they nourish themselves. It's this realignment from deep within. So I'm not sure if that really answered your question, but I hope in some way it did. Yes, thank you. So um, you mentioned Qigong as a way to manage this energy of the creation cycle. Can you perhaps go through the phases of the creation cycle and talk about various activities that would relate to each phase? That's a great question. Thanks for that, Sharon. Um, of course, the creation cycle is, for those of us tuning in, it's not only for people who think they're creative or for artists, for writers, for creatives. It, it underpins everything. Almost all of the processes that we see in the world, the unfolding of the moon cycle, the, the changing, shifting energies of the season, the changing energies of the day from yang to yin, yin to yang, for example. So if we look at the processes and there are various stages. We start with conception or preconception, actually, this vision. It's the same with whether we are conceiving a baby. We start with the idea, I would like to have a baby. Or even, for example, those of us who are writers, who are, for example, um, directors. I, uh, Sharon, you are you di direct and you are also a creative person. So it starts with this, this non-physical thing that comes to us. And I, I like to believe it's from the source, the greater source that we are all a part of. We receive in the water element connecting with this greater vision. And as we preconceive this vision, we connect with this vision and we let this live through us. From this stage, what happens is that we negotiate with this vision. Do we test it out in the world? How might it manifest from an idea into an actual person or an actual project or an actual artwork or an actual form or something real that is manifest in the world. And this phase of experimentation, of beginning to start to put something that is beyond the manifest realm into the real world is associated with this wood element phase. That's when we're testing out ideas. That's when we're experimenting and being playful and considering all the possibilities and not quite limiting ourselves yet. And I think that's really, really important at this stage, whether those of us who are tuning in, if you're wanting to connect with the wood element energy and this explorative phase is to be playful, to leave the seriousness out of the door and to say, what if the sky was the limit and we really explore everything that brings joy, that brings you this deep connection? After this phase, after we've tested out all the ideas, you're still playing around, there's something that probably resonates the most with you. So from this nothing, it becomes a little bit of the beginning of something, just like a seed that has burst from the surface of the soil and started to take shape, started to see the light. Then we decide, okay, now's the time I invest. I really start to put in all my heart and soul and I flow with this idea. I allow it to live. This is really the energy, the expansive energy of the fire element and also this uh, ability to be able to allow something to flourish and grow. 
And in this phase, um, what it's really important to do is like the energy is there. It's not to hold yourself back. And the really important thing is to completely be authentic and true to yourself. Because if we relate this back to the women's life cycle, what happens is at this stage of time, uh, many women over promise. I I'm someone like that. I say yes to someone else and I forget. This is something that's really aligned with the seed I planted from earlier on. Because if you then end up doing things that don't quite um, actually align from deep within, later on, that's when in the metal element phase, uh, when we refine, when we reflect and discern, that's when all the, the regret, with the resentment will start to rise in. So it's really important at this stage to connect with the full energy that is. Now, I know you asked about the activities, so I will give very tangible activities. In the follicular phase, it's great to play, to try a new modality, uh, to try a new way of moving, of uh, flowing. If you're very used to a specific Qigong form, you might experiment and try something else. You might try yoga, you might try rowing or flowing or even other creative things, anything that helps you feel that you're playing. Then when we come to the state of flow, if you feel your energy is full, anything that, that can allow this energy to move, that's the fire element. And this fire wants to expand and move. This is also a great time to connect with other people, to be out in the world and to express yourself. After this phase is the, the phase of, um, well, it's not really a phase in many versions of the creative cycle. In the five elements creation cycle, the Sheng Ke cycle, it is connected to the five elements and the earth element itself is this period when everything is ripe and we don't have to do anything. But for example, maybe the project you've been working on has started to take shape. Um, the, the, the child you've been caring for is finally at the stage where you don't have to tend to all of his or their needs anymore. They are able to be by themselves and everything is possible. Everything is ripe for harvesting. That's really the earth element, that transformation. I feel that many of us actually skip this stage when we're working on something. We rush through and we're like, hey, we have a product. Yes. And then we start to analyze, okay, this product good or not. And that's the next phase, which is the metal element phase. But this moment of simply returning to center, honoring, acknowledging that, wow, this has happened. And even ruminating because the energy or the emotion associated with this earth element is to, to ruminate, to think, to ponder and reflect. So if we connect with this energy, that really helps to bring everything back together so we don't get shaken off track by someone else's idea or something else we're supposed to do or someone else we're supposed to become. Um, the, so the last two phases, after that is the refinement, discernment, which we talked about a little just now, being objective, asking ourselves, is this really the right way forward? And then setting healthy boundaries so that we can nourish ourselves. And then that feeds in into the last phase, back into preconception, into the water element where we vision again. That was really a wonderful articulation of how the creation cycle actually works in reality, you know, not so abstract, not so theoretical, but in reality, thank you. I wonder if you could lead our audience in a Qigong practice that can illuminate the creation cycle so that we can experience it ourselves. Sure, I'd be glad to. We're going to start with our feet about hip distance apart and start by releasing the whole weight of your body down to the earth. Soften your knees, your hips, your ankles. As you exhale, imagine you drop a plumb line from the back of your head all the way down through your tailbone, connecting you to the earth. With your next breath in, Imagine from the back of your head, allowing your head to grow upwards towards the sky, connecting yourself with the Tai Chi axis. From here, gently and slowly relax your jaw, your shoulders, your neck. Let the tip of your tongue rest gently behind the back of your front teeth. Check in and take a couple of moments to notice if there are any areas of tension and relaxation. 
as you notice those spaces of tension. Exhale and send your breath there. Imagine your breath could nourish and create some spaciousness in those areas. We'll continue like this with just about two more breaths. Every time you exhale, imagine you let go of something that you would like to release towards the earth. And every time you inhale, you feel yourself grow and connect with the heavens. Good. Now from here, gently and slowly, we'll let the palms begin to reach upwards towards the heavens gathering and pulling from the heavens, reaching the hands up. The heaven represents all the dreams, aspirations, the non-physical things that you know are real. Let them shine down on you. Feel this connection with the young energy from above and let that heal you. Second round connecting with the heart area. Same movement, different intention, letting the palms move up, but this time drawing awareness to the center of your heart. Feel your heart as your source, as your connection with the divine. And feel this connect you with the others around you as well. Last round, connecting to the earth. Even as the hands move upwards towards the heavens, you never forget that. You feel the earth, know the earth, trust the earth. The earth is the most yin, the most physical, the most tangible. It is this present moment that you are in here and now. Now from here, we'll let the hands come into loose fists. We'll come into a few rounds of spinal cord breathing to enliven the spine. As you inhale, Begin to spread your collarbones, shine the front of your chest upwards. As you exhale, round the spine, draw and come back into yourself. Every time you inhale, imagining you're expressing who you are in the world. Every time you exhale, imagine you're drawing back into yourself, connecting with your purpose, your intention following your own rhythm, your own breath, which could be faster or slower than me. What matters is that you follow your own rhythm. We'll stay here for about two to three more rounds, feeling the expansion as you breathe in and feeling the contraction returning to source as you breathe out. As you come to the end of that last round, gently and slowly, we'll let the palms release down and we'll come into the exercise to connect you with the eight movements of T and the creative cycle. Let the hands gradually begin to gather some vital life force energy, some T. And then as you let the hands rise up, feel this energy rise. Feel it expand outwards into the world. Feel it contract back within. And then feel it draw in a little closer to the center. Feel it expand outwards. As you exhale, feel it descend. And lastly, let it dissipate. Let it gather and rise. Let it expand and contract. Let it draw in closer to you and then move out further away into the world. Let it descend and let it gradually dissipate. We'll stay here for a few more rounds and I'm here as a visual reference if you ever need, if you ever feel lost. What matters is that you follow your own breath, your own rhythm. Gathering, and you let it rise. Expanding, and naturally at the end of expansion is contraction. You let it come into the center. You let it move out. You let it descend, and it dissipates, returning to the source. Gathering and rising. 
expanding and contracting closer into you and away from you, descending and dissipating. Let's keep going for the next four rounds, following your own rhythm, your own breath, your own pace. And as you do so, you might notice that naturally your body is leaning forward and back, rocking forward and back. Don't hold yourself back. Allow the flow of this movement to guide you. And Sigon, what we want to avoid doing is causing stagnation. So anytime you notice there is a part of you that is unnecessarily tensing up, Send the breath there. See if you can soften and release that unnecessary tension. As you do this exercise, those of you who like to connect with visualization, you may wish to visualize this golden tea ball that is within your palms. And with your intention, you are beginning to move this ball to allow it to grow, allow it to contract, allow it to expand into the world. Gradually coming to your very last round. You're welcome to do this as many times as you wish. As you come to the end of that very last round, we'll return to the same exercise we started with, pulling from the heavens to consolidate this energy that we've worked with, gathering from the heavens, Connecting with your deep, deeper intuition, the guidance from above, the reason why you wake up every morning. Let that be your inner GPS. Second round, connecting with the heart space, feeling that as you move your hands, which are the wings of the heart, you feel that you are loved, you are seen, you are connected. You love, you see, you connect with others. Last one. Honoring and surrendering to the earth. From the heavens, we descend down onto the earth, never forgetting that you are a divine being having a human experience. From here, we'll take one palm over the other on the lower belly area, about three fingers below your lower dan tian or elixir field. If it feels good for you, you can gently half or fully close your eyes. Here, visualizing that golden energy ball that is now inside of you, connecting with all shifting phases of this energy and feeling that they are all you. From here, you're welcome to stay a little longer, transitioning into a standing meditation. If you feel ready to conclude this short but potent practice, then gently and slowly let your eyes blink open and we'll let the palms come into the heart center, uniting left and right yin yang, letting your head bow down towards your heart, honoring the space in the center of you, and then slowly and gently at your own pace, opening your eyes. Thank you so much for joining me for this standing practice. I hope you enjoyed this practice. Wow, that was really beautiful. Thank you so much for sharing that. I know that our audience probably felt what I felt, which was a real connection 
to my own, to, to our personal connection to the universe. So thank you so much, Winlin. I know also that people out there in the audience will want to be able to reach out to you. So if you can share with us what you're doing these days and how people can find you, that would be great. Yeah, and thanks. I'm glad this practice resonated with you, Sharon. Um, thank you so much for having me here. And well, for this coming year, my intention is to continue to support women. That's the heart of my practice and the heart of my um, purpose and my my passion to support women through this practice of connecting with the cyclical processes and the creative cycle and the five elements. So last year, I, I, because of COVID and the situation that we're in, I ran a virtual program that was a connecting with the power of the five elements and the creative cycle. And that was very well received. So I'm intending this year to continue along the same lines, uh, but with something a little bit longer and more about um, this idea of accountability and supporting women to be able to apply this in a real and tangible way through every single daily occurrence in real life situations and to support them using tools such as Qigong, psychology, yoga, um, various other different coaching tools that will offer them various different ways to navigate the different transitions that are in their lives. So there will be this in uh, it, currently right now, the intention for this virtual program. I'm also intending to at some point this year or perhaps next year to be able to offer this in person uh, as a workshop or a more extended program. And I'm hoping also because this is the water yin rabbit year, and it's a great way to harness and connect with the magic of this water element. What can we excavate this year? I'm so curious I'm, and I cannot wait. So I'm visioning or well, intending to have this at a place that is close to a large body of water so that we can all learn from and connect with this source of water that is also present within us and um, to be able to be in that circle of women supporting each other. Um, lastly, um, for those of us who are tuning in, if you happen to be a yoga teacher, um, because yoga is also at the heart of what I do. I love Qigong, but I also love yoga. And you don't have to choose either. Or I, I find all of these are great. They are just different tools. So those of you who are tuning in um, later this year, there will be a five elements Qigong training that is specifically targeted to support yoga teachers to integrate this knowledge and wisdom to better support uh, the women that are in your classes, in your programs, in your one-on-ones as well. And also I'm always open this year to collaborations. I feel this year is a great year to connect to the source with each other. So if anyone tuning in has a retreat space or for example is a owner of a podcast or is thinking of collaborating with something, I would love to hear from you. Uh, and yeah, what my website is wenlingtan.com and I can be reached on Instagram and Facebook as well. And my handle is flow with wenling. Thank you so much for that. We really appreciate your knowledge, your enthusiasm, and your vision. It's just wonderful. And thank you all out there in the Shift Network for joining us today. Uh, we wouldn't be doing this if people weren't interested. So we really do appreciate the part you play in making this happen. I'll see you soon. Thanks again. <laughs>